In the government's latest response... You must stay at home. Master of the house, doling out the charm. It's very important that everyone... Know that you are, you are not alone. All right, so let's have a talk about hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are essentially what fuels that world, right? Like they're not, they're not everything. They're not the whole deal, um, but they are a lot of it. So when we think of fuel, we think of oils, and those are hydrocarbons, long chains. Actually, they're pretty short chains in the grand scheme of things, but um, chains of carbons and hydrogens stuck together. So our learning goal is that by the end of this, hopefully you'll be able to look at a hydrocarbon either by um, just its chain or its even better, its general formula. So just look at it and break down what its formula is, its chemical formula, and identify where that's going to sit on the hydrocarbon spectrum. Um, yeah. So... This is going to be your vocabulary. If I could just get you to pause the video here, write this down uh, while you do it, maybe like the video, hit subscribe, why not? Um, pause the video, um, fill it out, uh, and so that way we've got a strong vocabulary, something to go back to as the lesson progresses. So hydrocarbons, first off, what are they, right? Like these are covalently bonded organic compounds of hydrogen and carbon. Now. Like a lot of the time, uh, your novice chemist will get confused and think that there could be an oxygen in there because it sounds like it was just hydro. Um, but when we use hydro in chemistry, I know it sounds like water. When we use hydro in chemistry, we tend to be talking about putting hydrogen only. Um, so yeah, so covalently bonded compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen only. Um, now there are three homologous series in um, in our three homologous series in our hydrocarbons, and they are defined by their functional group. Now, functional group is the defining feature in an organic compound. In an organic compound where we're talking about hydrocarbons, we're talking a pretty low order. There's not a lot of extra stuff. In fact, there's nothing extra in there, aside from maybe um, a halogen. So we're going to have halogenated ones, but that's for a later lesson later video. So the homologous series is going to be defined by three possible functional groups and we'll look at those as we go forward. So our first one we're going to look at are alkanes. Now alkanes have a general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So what that means is for every carbon there are two hydrogens and an extra two hydrogens on top of that. And the reason is that a neutral carbon should have four right, for um, covalent bonds coming off it. So we see here, imagine that these are the two carbons. It's just two carbons long. Um, whenever we talk about um, hydrocarbons or organic compounds in general, if we don't include the extra, an extra element that's attached to a carbon, we assume that the rest of the available bonds are filled up with hydrogens. So here we have one bond between these two carbons, so long chains of carbons. Uh, one bond between the two, and that means there would be three other bonds coming off, right? Um, so we could have one up here, one up here, one up here, one up here, and they'd be filled with hydrogens. So we'd have two Cs, but we'd have one, two, three, four hydrogens. And then on the terminal carbon, so the end carbons, we'd have one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here. So if this was three carbons long, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the end, eight on the end. So we can see how this sort of pattern builds out. And there are only single bonded carbons. If we get double bonded carbons, it stops being an alkane and becomes an alkene. Our alkenes have a double bond in the middle somewhere or in the, at the end, whatever, but they have a double bonded carbon, two carbons double bonded together. Um, the general formula is CnH2n because C, as we've made a double bond here, there are two less hydrogens which can fit in the molecule. So our, it goes down by two. Um, so that's an alkene, CN, H2N, um, and that's we've got at least one double bond. If we have more than one double bond in there, it actually um, throws off the general formula, but we don't worry about that just yet. That's, you know, that's for later, later days down the road. Um, and then we look at an alkyne. 
alkyne has a C, has a general formula of Cn, H2n minus 2. And that's because there should be a little carbon in there. That's because um, we have an extra double bond which takes another two hydrogens out of the mix. Um, but you can see this carbon here has four neutral bonds, right? That's four bonds that makes it a neutral carbon. And again, the imaginary carbon should be right. Let's just do it. There we go, another carbon. It makes me happier. Um, so yeah, so that's our carbons. So that's our, that's our basic level of information. So then we move along. So here are some examples. So let's have a look and see what we've got. First up, we have uh, three carbons along the middle. Okay, so CN is C3, which means if this is a, and we only said it's an only single bond, so this, that means we need to have, so three, eight hydrogens. And if we count up, we do. Okay, because an alkane has CNH2N plus 2, C3H8. So then we have an alkene right next to it. So it should be CN. We can see this because we have a double bond here, so that's an alkene. This is a structural formula, by the way. Um, CNH2N, um, 1, 2, 3. There's three of them, and there should be C2N, so 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can see that because there's this double bond, there's an extra hydrogen which is not able to bond because... This carbon has four bonds around it, and this carbon here has four bonds around it. So then we come down to the bottom, which is our alkyne, because we can see we've got a triple bond right there. So it's going to be um, 2n minus 2 for the H's. Okay, so we've got three, so that means it should be about four. And if we tally these up, that acts exactly where we are, C3H4. So let's have a crack at identifying um, examples based just on the general formula. And we're going to assume that there's only one of each functional group in there. So if we see this formula here, we have C6H14. Okay, that makes it an alkane. Because 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2, we end up with Cn um, h 2 n plus 2. So let's just check out working. The next one, we have C5 to 8. So 2 times 5 is 10. So H, so if it's an alkene, it would be H10, but it's actually 2N minus 2, which means it's an alkyne. And we can see that there. Um, our final one is N is 2, 2N is 4, so that would be our alkene. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thank you for watching, and yeah, hit subscribe, hit like, and ask questions, all that sort of nonsense, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.